What's up guys, it's Talon. So today we have a coaching of a player who I coached a couple weeks ago. He was, I think, Gold or Plat at the time that we coached him the first time. And he's now currently at Diamond. Uh, he does have other accounts, like he plays other roles on, but he wanted to learn mid lane. So we coached him on mid lane and he ended up going, I think from, like I said, Gold to, to Diamond now. And so now he kind of wanted some more coaching on what he'd improved on, kind of looking over his gameplay, seeing what he improved on, what he could still work on, that type of thing. So uh, if you guys are interested in that, obviously stick around for the video. If you're interested yourself in being coached by a rank five player, uh, I play autofill, so I really know how to coach every role. Uh, just DM me on Discord. My Discord is in the link in the description. Uh, and my Discord, if you just want to add it directly, is Talon1169. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the video. Find that after like level five or so, I'm able to pick up kills. Yeah. And I'm noticing I have a bad habit of like, oh, I'm ahead. I probably don't need to farm uh, waves as much. Let me see if I can snowball. Yeah. And, like and then eventually, Akali, even on like, like she scales so well that like you kind of always need to be farming. I mean, that's a problem I see with a lot of Akalis. Like, I remember I had an Akali the other day who was 8 0, and they were the same gold as the 0 1, like, yeah. Um, I mean, this trade mostly looks fine, I guess. I don't even know exactly how this match. I assume this matchup is pretty bad for you. Like, Garant usually is really good into assassins, so I mean, we're mostly just playing for electrocute procs. Like, here you traded, I'm pretty sure your electrocute is not back up. Maybe it, maybe it was. No. That. But yeah, you should only trade when your electrocute's up in this type of thing. Okay. And also, okay. I think you should just <clears throat> go conquer in this game as well. There are three tanks. So I think, like, you should go conquer, probably. But oh. if we're going electrocute, we should trade on electrocute. Also, don't take the heal here. Heals give you more um, based on level. You're not in any real danger of dying. So you should try to at least get level two before taking the heal because you're just gonna like you're losing health now basically okay um, okay so. i do go rift maker first yeah because i'm in you also missed a cs here like because you went for the heal as well and now you're not level two so that's another oh, small okay. thing. like the xp right yeah you missed the xp like you don't need to get every last hit necessarily in a harder matchup like this but yeah it's good though here like again this is what we should do just electrocute proc that's that's perfect and your wave is also really good. Like, this is exactly what we want to be happening in this lane. The only problem is you missed a little bit of CS and you grabbed the heal early. But, like, apart from that, and one time we traded without electrocute. Apart from that, you're playing the lane fine, especially for a hard matchup. Because, okay. so, like, again, like, in a hard matchup, we want our lane like this. And then our goal is to kind of crash it once we're going to get mana boots. So I'm pretty sure when this next wave comes, that'll be enough gold for you to get mana boots. So you make a mistake here as well. Okay. Our goal is to to push and crash the wave to get mana boots. I think we talked about this last time I coached you as well. Yeah. And then you want to be able to come back, get the wave after that. You'll hit level 5 on that wave. You'll have level 5 mana boots to roam um, with your jungler. And so what you do here, you trade with him and you waste your W to trade. What you should be doing is first you can just poke him when he goes for last hits here because you have a good wave. So you don't need to like rush this, this mana boost. You can be a little bit more patient. But... Okay. You're not, your goal is not to trade with him. Your goal is to recall. Your goal is to get a gold lead and then recall. And so we're going to see you're going to use your W to trade. You should be using your mm -hmm. W to last hit so that you can clear a wave because you get the extra mana from it, um, which means you also shouldn't have W before queuing because then you're not getting the extra uh, energy from it. You know, so, right. so those are the mistakes so far in the lane. But. And then again, yeah, we're, we're trading with him just like when we shouldn't be and we're going to lose these trades. Um, I don't know if he got a back off also but if he did then he might have item diff there and i'm pretty sure you could just walk up and queue there maybe you didn't have energy for queue or maybe it was on cooldown but but not but you see well, now we're kind of stuck here but our jungler bails yeah. us out so that's good though have you tried ever getting good at with the q or, or with the e flash i mean i did try a few times i missed it like yeah you're gonna miss it but in the long run it's gonna be useful so i do recommend continuing to try to get better at it because otherwise like they can react with their flash and get out a lot easier um so the good thing is despite the mistakes we made you end up in the same scenario that you otherwise would be in which like mm -hmm. with with how we played we were level five on a back we're getting mana boots and now our jungler is going towards top side so we're going to want to now crash this next wave and again look for realms because we're not killing a garen so we have level 5, we have mana boots, we want to look for a realm with our jungler. And maybe you could go bot here because there's a lot of fighting going on, but we would probably want to push the wave first. And by that time, okay. Vi is going to back. Another important thing on the Vi realm, um, I don't know what you were doing on your map because there's a replay, but yeah. we need to be looking to make sure we know what buff she has, because if she had both buffs, then you don't really have knowledge of where she would be. Say she only had a red buff, you know she'd go back to blue side, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. It looks like based on the map that she's probably going to go to red side after. 
So you can keep yeah. that in mind, and then you see your jungler has uh, red side camps, so you should be looking for a bot gank here, because bot's low anyways, you want to try to push the wave. Um, and it's fine to trade with him here, like you could have got electrocute proc, but again, like our main goal is not really to, to kill him, I guess he just instant you, so I mean, you know, we'll take the kill, that's fine. No, no complaints there. Um, but like the general thing we're trying to do is again just use our W more for pushing the wave and then roaming. But again, he instant you, so I, I there's no problem with you taking a free kill when you get a free kill. Oh, and you get insane RNG. Yeah, I, I think I get two of them. So here, uh, my Kazix is pinging me because he's better at the game than I am. He knew if I was there. Yeah, I yeah, um, I was gonna say like I don't think we should have been walking up for that plate there because we had no vision of buy and we didn't have things to escape. Like, the time where you could be greedy for extra plates and stuff is when you have ult, flash, W, like, your your champ has a lot of ways to outplay and escape. But you can be mm -hmm. greedy for gold on side lanes or plates or whatever when you have those things up, but you just wasted ult and you don't have flash. So going for something like that is pretty greedy, and uh, obviously we got lucky that it ended up not causing us to die, but yeah. Because that's what happens. A lot of time, like, I burn my resources to kill my laner. Yeah. So it's like, I can't go for plates because I don't know where the jungle is. Your champion is. almost never goes for plates. Like, it's very rare to get any okay. plates on a call. Like, your champ just does okay. not care about plates. Like, the reality is, like, obviously, if you get a free plate, take the free plate. But, like, it's a very rare thing. Again, we're looking a lot more for pushing and roaming on a champion like us, unless we're just hard stopping our lands. So, again, like, this Garen is clearly dog shit. And so he's giving us a bunch of free kills. So you're going to take those free kills, and you can play a bit more for plates here. Like, this is a scenario. You're full health now. Vi can't just, like, one-shot you. And your ult's coming mm -hmm. up. Here, you, since the plate's uh, like it's 1850, 1804, you obviously you get a plate here because it's so low. But even if, say, the turret was full health, you could probably go for one plate in a scenario like that. But you shouldn't go for a second plate. You should just go to push this wave. Like, going for this plate, we're just wasting too much time when okay. what we could be doing is just pushing it and then again looking for some type of roam. Um, because as well, uh, do you have, the, you have the vision, like... Yeah, you have the, the vision properly. So, so we see that their blue is probably up. Your teammate also pings it. And your Kha'Zix is on the same side. So, like, what we would yeah. want to be doing, you would want to have uh, cleared that wave a lot faster, and then I don't know if we have a ward up. If we do have a ward up, we'd want to ward their blue buff. If we don't have a ward up, we would still uh, push that wave rather than going for the plate, and then we would hover towards the bot side, probably just sit in the bush for a little bit, um, or take a recall, depending on what items. We but it looks like you wouldn't have that. You have 1,000 gold. So actually, yeah, I would be taking a recall. I would be okay. warding the blue buff, and I would be taking a recall, because we have 1k gold to spend. Um, because there's nothing really else to do. Because again, our jungler, our Kha'Zix, is, uh, he is, uh, he has two camps left. So, like, he's gonna farm. Um, your Kha'Zix has two camps. So, like, we want to, to roam on the next wave, because then he'll have cleared his two camps. So we're gonna kind of wait for the next wave to really look for an actual roam play, which is why we should have recalled. Whereas, like, say he had no camps left, and he was running towards bot, we could end up going bot earlier there. But now, uh, you have... And this, doing this is like whatever, that's fine. But I again, I could have just you could just let your good back go off because now you're just kind of stuck here for a lot longer. Not the end, of the yeah. Long I have these like weird rules that pop. It's like, oh my gosh, don't recall when a wave is arriving or something like push yeah. it first and then. So, I mean, I get that. Like, oh, your RNG is insane in this game, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got really shit. lucky. That's so good, but yeah, like again, you're playing way too much for land dominant, and there you could have got the extra plate. Like, this is a scenario where you should have got the plate because it was. It is whatever, though. But you're playing way too much for lane dominance in this game, where because the Garen is so bad, it works. And when you're laning someone who's awful, it's good to play for a little bit more of lane dominance and, like, snowballing through lane. But you have many opportunities to look for roams here where you could have a lot of free kills, and instead, you're not doing so. And then the yeah. one time that we look for a roam is, like, our lanes are already hard winning on bot side, and then now mid's getting pushed. So, like, the one time where we're looking for the roam, it's kind of too late based on, like, time. what's already occurred. It's not an awful roam, because uh, you should also stay probably for longer for just, like, more plates. Like, I don't really think you recall here. Like, Dragon is spawning. Your team is going to fight Dragon. You either start rotating towards mid to clear that wave, or you just go straight to Dragon here. You don't really do what you're doing, because now there's a chance your Kha'Zix dies if there's a Vi there and, like, a uh, Maokai goes or whatever. It's probably going to work out, because your team is just oh, cool. winning. But it's, it's better it's to just I, go. It's because I canceled, I canceled my back earlier. Yeah, it's so only, it's it's messing up the tempo okay. of the whole game pretty much because of that. But I guess since you have Riftmaker, you wanted to back. But in reality, I I get like it feels really good to get your item, but if they did get contested on the dragon, then your teammate probably would have died because you left. And then like cool, you have a Riftmaker, but now you don't have a dragon that your team's going for. So yeah. but they end up going opposite. I don't, I don't know why. 
I used my W there for no reason. Yeah, I guess you were probably scared of Vile, I'd assume, something like that. Yeah, sometimes I use it, like, trying to predict, but I end up just wasting it. Yeah, and again, like, you can never kill Garen. The goal is literally just clear the wave, and he kind of gets prior on you naturally just at this point, so... It's whatever. You need to be pinging, though. You didn't ping the danger of Garen's No, I didn't. Thing. Um, but yeah. At least you're aware, like, you're going for the roam. Another, like, small thing, this is a very small thing, nothing major, but, like, you were scared of these hitting you, so you let it go to your tower first. Mm -hmm. The reality is, you need to have a lot of urgency, because you know Garen is rotating the top right now. You need to get there as fast as possible. Losing, like, a little bit of HP from these minions hitting you, but killing them faster is going to be more effective than wasting an extra, like, couple seconds, you know. And, and again, that's a minor nitpick. It's not a huge thing, but it is just something to keep in mind. We need to be more, like, urgent about something like that where yeah. you're roaming. For sure. And, okay, at this point as well, your teammate's already screwed. Like, you should even acknowledge, like, at this point, you should already know he's, like, screwed. Like, he's going to probably kill here, and then the Garen's going to kill him. There's no way that you by yourself are doing anything. So you need to be taking this time. There's a low-ass turret for either pushing this wave and looking for a bot roam, because bot is extended pretty far. And you know mm -hmm. Vi is not there, and you know Garen is not there, so then you get pushed, you have a free 30 seconds to a minute to roam, or use that time to get the plate, uh, or get the rest of the turret, uh, depending, yeah. really either decision is fine. But you need to be doing something like that, rather than going for a play that's already lost. And now we waste time, and Garen ends up coming back, so you don't have as long uh, to clear the wave, so. Yeah, right here is just being incisive. I'm like, okay, yeah. do I try and clean up after that fight, or... And again, now we're trading with a Garen. We're just trading with Garen way, way too much this game. Even, like, he's also... I'm pretty sure he's probably, what, zero two zero three. Like, he's not going to be worth as much gold anyways. And he's also Garen. He's hard as hell to kill. And even if he gets, like, put slightly further behind, he's still Garen. He's always going to be Garen. So it's like... Mm -hmm. This is just useless, basically. You Again, you see how long their bot lane's been up here? We 100% yeah. could have killed the bot lane... We we should have been there thirty seconds ago almost at this point. Yeah, like, yeah definitely. So, and again, you get it, so I I don't need to reiterate too hard. But yeah, I think you might end up killing him at least. But even like then, not the most valuable. Now we're like, just wasting. Yeah, I don't know where Vi is. Yeah. Can I go for the so that's, yeah? You should be recalling here again. Like you don't you don't know where Vi is. You just use your alt, just recall, and then go for the turret after. Like you still have a while. Like it's just, yeah. Like this is just gonna happen. Okay. I mean, maybe with your Kha'Zix you can do something, but it's, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't be doing, yeah. You're just kind of wasting time again. Like, it's the whole time wasting thing. It's a pretty similar yeah, thing to before. Yeah, I'm like, trying to see if I can get a few hits on the turret, and then... I can see you're certainly, more. like, a lot better at mid lane from before, though. Like, there's definitely a lot of improvement. So, it, it, but it's still just the indecision, and you really, it's that you're not roaming enough. Like, in a game like this, you have a lot of opportunities to create roam timers. And, again, like, say you were laning an Orianna, and you were shitting on an Orianna, like you're shitting on this Garen. Well, then you can stomp her harder. Like, you can play more for lane, because it's very easy to one-shot, right? But, like, when you mm -hmm. have your stuff, you can kill her, and it's going to be a lot quicker. But, but killing this Garen over and over just doesn't do nearly as much as putting an Orion or a Syndra or someone like that behind, so. Right. And then, in the end, I think his gold is still pretty similar well, to he, mine. Yeah, he got first turret, and all you're doing every time you kill him is getting 300 gold. You're never getting plates off of it, so, like, you've killed him yeah. two or three times. That's maybe six to 900 gold extra, but he got first turret, so that's, I don't know the exact number, but that's probably, like, five-ish hundred gold. So now you're only, what, up, like, 400 gold from that exchange. You got a couple plates, so you're probably still up a little bit over, like, six, 700. And you're obviously still, like, you're way more valuable than the Garen in this game. You've still been being very valuable to your team. But we could have 100% put this bot lane, like, we, we could have pissed this bot lane off to the point that they're like, what the fuck is my team doing? These guys suck. Like, you know, like, that's what you yeah. should You should have been making them really angry at the Garen, because this Garen... Is really awful, and you could have been making bot lane's game complete hell if you wanted to, basically. Right, right. And even top lane too. Again, it's like about roaming with our jungler. So whatever side your jungler's on, you want to time your roams with this camp. So ideally, you again you crash the wave uh, once he's on, like say one camp left on that side, and then you ping and you start roaming. And it doesn't always have to work out. Sometimes you can just be like going midway through the river, and then you're like, oh, this is not going to work. I'm going to go back, clear the next wave, see if there's an opportunity now. It's not always about actually doing something, but being missing in and of itself is already applying a lot of pressure. It's like when you play against an Evelyn, you always have to play back because you never... <laughs> okay, the mechanics are crazy there, but... Yeah, I was like... Misclick. Yeah, I don't it know what Akali, Akali can be confusing. I, I, when I tried to learn her, it was the same. 
but at least you're trying to do stuff. Yeah, so like, I see my, my yeah, ADC no, went mid here. So I was going to go catch the wave from Garen, but I was like, maybe I can get a kill. Yeah, you get a free kill. It's better. And we don't really, like, as much as you can, you want to be avoiding. When you're, you're a pretty fed quality at this point in the game, you don't want to be on Garen when you don't have to. Like, your goal is only to be on Garen when you need to clear a wave, and your team's not going to okay. clear the wave. Like, you want to be going for the squishies, one-shotting the squishies, and stuff like that a lot more. So here at 10 minutes, we finally end up taking this turret. Yeah, which is fine. Like, Akali's not going to get mid turret super early. And, like, you can even be relatively okay as an Akali giving up your turret at some point in the game and, like, being a little down on, like, the turret pushing game. Like, obviously, you don't want to lose it. But sometimes yeah. for a roam, if you think, like, it's a pretty guaranteed double kill or, like, a dive or, you know, you see an opportunity, you can give up that turret if it's not a crazy split pushing mid laner. Like, if you're landing into a Jace or a Garen, we gotta be more cognizant of that turret dying because they push super fast. But if you're landing into a lot of mid laners, say another Assassin, say any mage mid laner, those champs aren't going to push so fast. So even if they will end up getting two, three plates if we roam for a while, if it's a very, very likely kill and we pushed our wave to make it so that they have to waste a lot more time before actually being able to push, then we're totally fine with that. It's not really about the turrets. Okay. Your champs a lot more about picks and side lane and then getting fed and then carrying the team fights, so... Okay, that's a lot of like weight off my mind because it's like I feel yeah. like I'm not hurt enough. I'm like, okay, I'm getting kills, but mid turret is still up. Like, so yeah, like if you watch me play Ziggs versus Diana, when I'm playing Ziggs, I basically don't leave mid until my turret's dead because my whole goal is like that turret needs to be up for as long as possible because that allows me to do so much because my chance wave clear is insane. I'm really good at stalling games, but when I'm playing Diana, obviously I'm still gonna try to keep it up, but I'm nowhere near as like worried about that. Okay, that's kind of unfortunate they saw you here. That's not like the end of the world. But you did roam, like, pretty sure you saw them both and still went up. Yeah, like, you see them both, like, like I don't, the, the idea here, it's surprising that they see you. I don't know if the vision extends this far, maybe it does. But either way, you saw two people here, and you walked straight up into them. Like, this is never the proper path. You can just go through the, the, the other side here and just I mean, away. Okay. I thought I could just, like, one-shot Kaisa, and then... I thought I was strong enough to take yeah. Vi out of it. So, Vi ultimate will always stop you from doing that. Like, that's never going to work into a Vi. She has ultimate, she has CC. It's, it's never going to happen, I, I guess, you know. Yeah, yeah. You got greedy, but it is what it is. All good. So, fast forward here a little. Also, we have uh, Soul Point here, so, like, Soul is actually pretty important to play for now. I like the dragons, pretty important. Um... They all rotate bot or top here. I'm pretty sure you can just you probably just go fight, I guess. Like I was thinking about going side lane for bot here, but I feel like they might end up getting Baron if they see you, so I think it's better to just hover like you are, honestly. You can maybe okay. you can't one shot him. Miss my E. It is what it Which is. Which is good because I would have probably followed her into three. No, I think you would have killed her if you had her. Yeah. I think I think it'd be fine. You would very least trade, but I think you would live because it's just Maokai Garen. And if you have your W, maybe you didn't have W up, so I don't know. I also don't know the exact limits of this champ. I don't really play it at all. Okay. Alright, so at this point, like, can we do Baron? I think we could probably do Baron if our team is coming, but Teemo's not there, so probably not. Alright, at this point, I think... Kind of, the team's kind of low. I, I would try to do Baron, honestly, yeah. if my own team is going. Because Kha'Zix and Sivir kill it really fast, and you can burst it down. Pushing I, didn't know if me and Kha'Zix, I didn't know if me, me and Kha'Zix could do it. I saw that Sivir wasn't going. Yeah, you can't so do it alone. Like, I would ping it and like try to get them, but yeah, like they're not going, so it's like, you can't. But you should recall now for tempo. Like, again... The, the, okay, the thing, right, the thing right. that needs to be understood here, first of all, you waste your sweeper, that's really bad because you want to be finding a flank on this important fight. And again, we acknowledge how important the fight is because we have two dragons, we really want the third dragon. You want your sweeper to find an actual flank on the fight because like, that's generally what your champ's looking for is a flank. You can't go in early because you need to wait for Vi ult out. That's another thing, in this game you have to wait for Vi ult before you ever go in because if she's smart yeah. she'll just ult you, like in an actual team fight. Um, and you need to be recalling earlier because then we want to be, again, going for vision and you're going to be sweeping on the bottom side to try to find a good bush to hide in. Like, I would look usually for the bush right uh, to the, like, mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. of this scuttle here that I'm pointing at. 
Um, yep, that's like a really good bush to typically find a flank in, or you could even go to the deeper one if, since your Teemo's pushing, you could kind of be hovering him. So, so yeah, we just should have taken it back earlier because the objective is spawning soon. Okay, okay. I think I was so focused on Kha'Zix pinging Baron that yeah. I'm like trying to sweep this area because in my head that's what we're going to go for in the next couple seconds. But yeah, we end up not that. doing it. And also, um, now we just saw Vi on bot, it's very important that you were paying attention to see if she ulted or not. And now you're going for not soul. You should definitely be going for soul here. And I know your teammate just died, yeah. so you're probably like worried about it. And also, this is not the time to farm. The time to farm is any time apart from when objectives are up. Objectives about to spawn right, is one right. time we don't need to. I mean, like you're like it's kind of fine, but again, like we should be finding a flank angle rather than just going straight with our team here. We see a Maokai ult out. That's very good to note, though. Now a Vi ult's out, and we all of a sudden can one v nine the fight. I think Vi just ulted there. I think we just saw that. So like you should be free in this fight. To, you. In kind of early, no, uh, yeah. You also you but, get out of your W, like you have you can be patient in your W there, and you can just alt your okay. team here. Like, all, all you can do here, if you walk up this way, you can go, you see your Sivir there. Like, if you have, I don't know when your E comes up, you can be patient, just wait for you. Like, your W is gonna last a couple more seconds, and then you just W mm -hmm. towards your team, and that's better. Wing out this way, it's still mostly fine, not a big deal, but you were kind of like panicking to get out of your W before it even expired a little bit, yeah, a little bit. Oh yeah, and you did have your E, so you could 100% have just gotten out. But yeah. And now you alt in. Again, we should have been alting out, because at that point we realized, like, after okay. picking that one person, we can't kill any of these tankier members. Like, again, Conqueror is going to make it way easier for you to kill these tankier members, but also, mm -hmm. your main goal is killing Kai'Sa and Gwen in this game. The other three, you kind of got to rely on your team to do. Especially, like, yeah. Sivir, Teemo, they need to be melting the tanks, so... <laughs> so I think we do end up losing soul here. That's not the end of the world. Like you're still in a good spot in this game, but they are outscaling us, so we have to be kind of worried. And again, like your target priority is Gwen or Kaisa, and you need to mm -hmm. wait for Violet and then ideally Maokai ult, but like Maokai ult, not the end of the world. You also should probably grab a QSS after third item. Um, okay. But, yeah. And then yeah, they get Baron off that too. Actually. Could we have ever prevented the Baron? I don't know if we're, were too many of you dead. Like, let's see. So they got the dragon. Like, how long, how much time? You never, no, you did die in the fight. Okay, you died. So there's nothing you could have actually done. It's just, yeah, okay. There's nothing you can do. Okay, I'm just making sure. I don't know why your team is overextending. But yeah, like, now that they got the Baron, the goal is not to fight. Baron gives... Uh, yeah, like we don't want to fight there. Like you should be trying to look for bot wave or pushing out some type of wave, just so that they're not able to collapse as hard. Our team is kind of the one going in, so like it's not that much that you can do about it. But we should be looking to hover, and then somehow this guy just griefs the game. So like, shout out to her, I guess. But I would go towards bot even right now. Yeah. But you do, so that's good. And Kha'Zix covers it, so you can just go back towards mid now, yeah, like you do, that's fine. Again, we're paying attention to Vile, but like, you didn't ult yet, and we went in. I guess you kill her. I guess it's fine. But... It's, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, you played a lot of this, like, later parts of the game pretty well. Like, in catching the side here is really good, too. It's mostly just, like, like a lot of times. Yeah, go ahead. Even in losing team fights, because my first instinct is like, oh, wait, we're outnumbered, so that's not a fight I should take. But then on the other hand, it's like, wait, I'm really ahead. I can probably afford to be a little more aggressive than I would normally. It just depends. Okay, like, well, we, we just trolled the game. Yeah. Right? We just yeah, right. trolled the game. I mean, it's like, again, like, it's just your target priority in this game. Like, you're trying to kill a Garen, dude. Like, we can never kill Garen. Ever. But yeah, I mean, like, your overall decision making is not that bad. The main thing is, like, you're not backing enough. So, like, okay. in a lot of these situations, like, way earlier, like, here, you should have just backed already. Like, when you went for the, the fruit here, you were talking, so I didn't, like, acknowledge it at the time. But, like, you're so low health, what are you actually going to do in a fight? There's, like, a low Maokai. You're not going to get to that Maokai. You're not going to kill Garen. Who are we going to kill? Maokai, Garen? Neither of them. So, the T-Rex? Yeah. No, like, that's not going to happen. If we recall, we're actually useful, plus Elder spawning in 49 seconds. This is the worst possible time in the entire game to die. And then we end. So then we just yeah. lose the game. All of our hard work kind of just goes away because of that. So maybe something? I don't know. 
Maybe Kha'Zix Goat. Okay. Lux yeah, Goat. Yeah, Lux do it. Okay, but then you meet. I guess you can go in because you have Elder. But it's kind of like... It's a bit panicky with your Flash. You're just... Okay, like... You also, yeah, I get, I get too excited. I just like... It's, it's actually... It's, it's very... It's, there, there's a very simple thing I think you can do to like reduce your like anxiety of dying and panicking and it's really just like every fight before you ever go in I think this is like the number one habit you need to be building look on the scoreboard and determine what can kill you and what can't kill you what okay. you need to use for them so for example based on how this game goes we know again the Maokai ult and Vi ult are the two actual dangerous things for us USS counters both of those so we should understand we need to buy QSS after third item. And then we can just be like, okay, I'm just going to use my QSS when one of these things are used on me so I don't have to panic as hard. Like if you're just aware of what can actually kill you, rather, and you also could probably go Crown Forth because like Crown Forth is going to make Vi not be able to ult you as well. If you're actually just thinking and being patient about like what can kill me and then you go in with confidence that you know what can and can't kill you, and be okay with dying and messing up and being like, oh, that actually kills me. Like, you you need to be thinking more often to yourself, oh, that can kill me? Because, like, you need to be testing what can and can't kill you and being actually thinking about these types of things rather than just going in, you're like, oh, I'm going to click buttons. Oh, I panic. I randomly flash. Oh, but I want to go back in. And there was no reason to flash because you were already far enough out with your E. Like, you're just, you're just panicking a lot. It's that simple. And we need to just think more about what actually can and can't kill us. That makes sense. Here I'm just celebrating his luck stole elder. So. Yeah, I mean splitting is fine here in this point. The Baron's up in thirty. We should be playing for that with our elder most likely, and your champ is pretty safe on the side with ult. So like you're not that scared of dying, and then you just kind of should recall at this point and then be setting up for Baron, which you do. So that's good. Yeah. And then now again at the Baron, you're just killing Gwen or you're killing Kaisa. And again, okay. we should have QSS. You ha you even you even got a fourth item, and then you spent another thousand gold. That is hundred percent a QSS or a stasis. But instead, you bought Phoenix Codex to get your fifth item faster. I don't know. I yeah. don't think you have any QSS no, no, no. yet. I don't. And so again, like I, I prefer building offensively. Like I'm glad that you're not like you know second item stasising. Like that's roll two. But after you're on three items, your champ's burst damage is really high. You're already ahead, so you have the luxury of building a bit of defensive items. And they have two champs who, if those two champs get shut down by the same enchant, and those are the only champs who can champs who can really like lock you down and kill you. And of course, we want to get it, you know, so. Definitely. And I think by default, I always just get stasis. Stasis would have been fine too, though. That's the thing. Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be QSS. If it was stasis, that's still okay. Obviously, QSS is slightly better, but it is a little bit more difficult to use. But if you got yeah, stasis, that's to... also fine. Your teammate is trolling, though, but you're also, like, hovering in a... I guess you're just worried about... But, like, again, it's kind of a... Well, I was kind of letting you let the debate because it seems like she didn't understand yeah. what I was trying to. But the reality is, you need to have urgency with your elder. Like it was thirty-three seconds. So, like you need to be more aggressive Correct. when something like this is happening. So like your teammate is trolling up here, but like let's look how long like we could have seen them. Like they're going up. There's nothing you can really do about him, but we see the Vi up here. I think that's Vi. It's kind of hard to see on my map. We can yeah, take a more right. aggressive path here. Again, if we have QSS, I keep saying that. But even if you didn't, you have W either way. You're still going to be able to survive. You're not going to just like get one shot. You take this more aggressive path behind the Baron, and then you can look for a one shot on the Gwen or on the Vi. And if you one shot Vi, you get Baron automatically. And like we yeah. see again, their whole team is going to show mid, but Vi is still going to be towards the Baron side. We see Maokai shows mid. Gwen is going back there. That Vi on that ward should die. Like, she should be dead on that ward. And then we kill their Vi, oh. and maybe with the Kha'Zix we can get Baron. Maybe we can't, but obviously we have a dead jungler on enemy team. That's great. But instead, you're just sitting in the bush. Again, like, even here, you should be walking. You could literally probably alt that Vi, like, right now, and just killed her. Like, when she was walking up there, even now, it looks like you'll finally alt her. I don't know why the hell she's, like, inside of your guys' spawn, but we finally do kill her, or I think. What happens, I guess. Yeah, so good. Do yeah. And yeah, pushing top wave is probably the next thing to do here because our Kha'Zix is not alive, so we can't really, and our Baron, or our Elder rather, is gone. <clears throat> I think Sivir's respawning, so you can probably hope that she goes for Garen. And then if she doesn't, then you have to recall, but for now you can just play for this top turret. You have your W up, so you're probably safe. Maokai might be coming, as we know, but... Yeah, and then we kind of... Well, it's, AP, it's AP. So he's not really... Yeah, you just one-shot the... Okay. But this is really good. 
And now we recall, we ping Baron. But, okay, there's uh, not nothing you can do about that. That is what it is. You got a double kill, that's perfectly fine. I don't know why your Kha'Zix is not on Baron right now. That's fine, though. That's a good play by you. And you get an inhib, so it still works. Game is kind of a mess. But... Yeah, I've been having a few weird games because, like, people like to invade on jungle, like, level one. Like, either on oh, yeah. or the... So, like, if I'm a Vlad level one or a Kali level one or whatever. Yeah, I mean, the only thing you can do when you notice your teammates invading is just, as soon as you see your teammate doing it, just hit, push your wave as fast as possible. You can't control it, but try to get level two, and then you can help, like, if you have your lane push and you have Pryo. Again, if they're going to okay. die, they're going to die. You don't, like, have to, like, overly force to, to help them. But, yeah, I have noticed, I was coaching a Riven earlier, and he got invaded. He's, like, plat one. And he got invaded in the game I coached him live, and it was, like... I don't know what Yeah, and it, for some reason, it, it throws off my whole, like, tempo. Like, people burn flashes and bot lane dies. Yeah, or... it makes the game really messy and weird for sure. And again, here, it's kind of fine to hover, but again, we're, like, we're wasting our sweeper and not a great time because the Elder is really, like, the probably turning point in the game, and we want to find a flank on Elder. But we sweep 30 seconds before, when in reality, most likely nothing happens until Elder. Obviously, stuff yeah. could happen, but we more like again. If you had the vision here, you knew if this was worded. Like, say this hypothetically was worded, you could die right now if they that they ended true. up saying a play, and that could be really bad. But if we knew it was worded or not, we end up just finding a better angle to possibly kill. And I do need to pay more attention to when uh, Elder comes up. Yes, for sure. It seems you're usually not I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm tunnel visioning on Baron, and then it's like, oh shoot. I know, yeah, now that I think about it as well, like this whole game, Maokai's a fine target too because he's AP. So you actually have three targets that you can kill. So, and then the Garen is just awful, so you kind of have four almost. Looks like you carry this fight. Your team is really uh, bad this game though. But... Kha'Zix was okay. Yeah. I probably would have died a lot more if he pinged me off the wave as much as he did. But he Timo ends doing up. Baron, though. Like, he could have done. Like, even now, he could have been on Elder, I feel like, for like a while. But I mean, your Timo ends the game, so it looks like he win. So. Yeah, Timo. I finally got Diamond, man. I don't know. I had like. <laughs> That's good. Seven game win streak out of nowhere yesterday. Love to hear it. I don't know. The, the early game raid with Electrocute way more. Like, uh. Yeah. Raid with Electrocute rather than just like trading when you feel like it. Same with Bone Plating, too. Like, I don't know if you have Bone Plating or not. But, um. If you do trade around your bone plating, and if enemy has bone plating, if you can pop it and then make a trade after that, like you just queue them okay. once, say, and then you go for your full electrocute trade after you pop your bone plating already. Like just basically pay more attention to the runes in the trading and lane. Um, okay. We'll mostly talk about the early games again. Your late game was mostly good. Like there were some small mistakes in the mechanics or whatever, but like the, the later parts of the game were fine. The early game feels like the bigger problem with how much you're not yeah. paying attention to roaming. So, um, as and well, like, one uh, thing I wanted to yeah. ask, Go ahead. Uh, how do you play, what's the proper way to play into ranged uh, matchups? Because sometimes it's like, okay, I'm just going to sit under tower, let them push into me. But if they're able to get the slow push slow enough, sometimes they're level three and I'm still level one. And Yeah, so like, I mean, it's really as simple as like hovering the, uh, the XP. The XP so that you can hit level two, because your level two, your W is pretty safe already. And then on level three, you already have like enough threat. So it's you could take fleet if you want. If you like these in these matchups, you can take fleet to be easier or second wind. Um, so your runes can help a lot. Second wind and fleet, if you need them, like depending on like so if you're into a Jace, you could take that. If you're into an Orianna, you don't really need it because she's not as threatening. Um, so I would pay a lot of attention. I think runes are a big thing that you can now start working on now that some of these things are like these these bigger issues are fixed. And then yeah. with those rune changes. You'll be able to survive to level two, level three, and then on level three, you can start, and even on level two with Kokali, you can start pressuring with your W to get that electrocute trade. If you do have electrocute, uh, even if you have fleet, you can still get decent damage off on them with the trades, and then do play more passive again until your uh, second ability comes back up. And then by that time, the second time your second ability comes up, you'll be level three. You'll have like a full combo where you can burst people down and probably have yep. one shot potential if you got a good trade off with your level two W. And then again, we're just always setting up the wave to try like to recall on mana boots, and then at that point, the the, the lane turns in your favor. So, okay, I got it. And also another thing is sometimes you have to back earlier because of how the lane works. And if you have to back and you only have five hundred gold, buy a pendant. Dead. Like uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be yeah. gold. It can also be a pendant, and then that's actually a lot of burst damage as well. 
Okay, I haven't tried that before. So I'll I'll write that down then. If backing on five hundred gold by a pendant. But sometimes you just have to back if the lane goes poorly. Um, but yeah, if, unless you have any more questions, we'll go back into like the stuff we were talking about that relates to the, this game. Sorry, um, no, that's not. No, that's not. You don't be sorry. That's what I'm here for. Just to answer questions. Um, target priority though, like generally paying attention to. Uh, I'm also going to say keep track of what spells can kill you. Mm -hmm. And who you can kill. Because again, you kept going on Garen. You cannot kill Garen. Ever, pretty much. Yeah, I thought, I thought with Riftmaker, I would be able to. Yeah, I mean, even like it's not even that you can't kill him. It's that by the time you kill him, you waste everything on a Garen who's not their carry. So it's like, yeah, trading one for one is just not good in that type of a scenario. And then um, in lane... Don't trade so hard when you can create adv other advantages. Okay. Which is like the roam advantages or good back timers. Yeah. Uh, these types of things, like it's not as effective to make these heavy trades. Like you're, you, the times that you make these heavy trades and you use your whole kit on someone need to be more intentional in the sense that like, you're making that early or that engage because you know you're not going to be able to go with your jungler in a site like engaging mm -hmm. on a wave before your your jungler he has like three camps you know the next wave that he's going to probably look for a gank but you're engaging while he's still farming like stuff like that like you're just it's just putting you in a worse position or engaging when oh. you don't know enemy jungler's location like the, like with the vi we were kind of not super aware of where she was a lot of the times so like those types of things you got it. And then those are like the main things I can think of right now. Um, okay, I'll, I'll keep. The, the, I'll keep. Yeah, energy. the last thing I'll write quickly is um, it's okay to build defensively. Went ahead, but yeah, those ones I'll just send uh, to you real quick. So 